All right, good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. Today's one, we're just gonna run through the Ryko fuel manager system. Anything you need to know about that, how I ended up choosing this one, and what you're gonna need to install that. So let's jump into it. Now, just to start off with, let's have a look at what the Rykel fuel, fuel Manager system actually does for you. So the purpose of this is a second level of defense of diesel filtration throughout the year. And this helps stop any contaminants or even water through the storage tank at the bottom. It does also separate any other particulates that might actually be blocking up the fuel rail there. Now, there are a couple of different filters that you can choose, um, mostly due to the size of what sort of particulates you are trying to filter out. Now, just to give you guys an idea, a sort of general rule of thumb of something you might be looking at is it's measured in microns. Now, to start off with, you're probably looking at about 100 microns, and that works for things like fuel pumps and other non-essential sort of equipment. Going down from that, you're looking at about 40 microns, and that's for generally for carburetors. Um, 10 microns, you're looking for about manifold sort of filtration level. And then about five microns is for petrol, diesel, direct injection or fuel rail systems as well. So the one that I did go for is the five micron final filter stage. Um, now the one thing to look out for if you are installing one of these sort of things is look at the fuel flow rate. So one of these has got a flow rate of about 120 liters per minute, well, which isn't actually perfectly fine for a diesel engine this size. Now the next thing to actually be looking at is where, the, where you actually want to be mounting this inside the engine. There are two options. You do naturally have your actual factory filter, which already does some of the work there for you. And then secondly, you can either mount this in front of that filter, pre-filtering anything that any contaminants that might be coming through, or you might want to mount it after the factory filter and go down to an even smaller filtration. Now smaller than five, you do start restricting a little bit of the actual flow rate there, so it's not always recommended or ideal, depending on what sort of system you are completely running. For this one, I have decided to go before the factory filter. It does also help to weed out any sort of warranty issues, as if anything does happen to your fuel rail system, the manufacturer won't be able to turn around and say, well, we had a fuel filter in place, you put something else after that, and therefore contaminants have actually accessed, gained access into the engine. So by putting it before that, you can still go, your fuel filter should have stopped it. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what you're actually gonna need to be able to install this. So first of all, you will need the Ryko fuel manager system. You will need two end caps. They do, are generally sold separately. A 10 millimeter barb to connect onto that one as well. Now, I have also chosen to use two 90 degree connectors and that's just to come out of the actual filter itself, run straight back down as the fuel lines on the T60 do run from underneath. Um, I've had a, to make a custom made bracket for the T60, just to be able to mount this one. I'll show you guys where that one fits into the ute itself. You will need some thread sealant as well. About half meters length worth of 10 mil fuel line, two hose clamps, flathead screwdriver. Now, these ones are the hard ones to actually come by. And these are the quick connectors, as the LDV T60 does run a nylon hose. I didn't feel like cutting into that one or trying to reconnect it. So what I'm gonna be using is these little connectors. Now, I've actually tried everywhere, super cheap, Pertec, I tried Bursons. No one has got any of these, as the T60 ones are unique to that system. But once again, the guys at Western Filters over in Sydney, they were actually able to come through. And as far as I know so far, they're the only ones to actually supply these as they have been working on their own kit for this specific system. Now they've been an absolute huge help when it comes to this, as well as for my catch can. I wasn't actually aware that they do sell, sell the kits when I started this. Um, I generally build my own things anyway, but they have one that is ready with the brackets, everything else you need, hosing, and a custom made bracket as well that they do sell as one part. You can simply order that online or over the phone from them and they can get that sent right out to you. So once again, big shout out to those guys for helping me out. I would probably not have been able to do this without actually getting hold of those brackets. So let's jump across to the U and we'll get this installed. Okay, to start off with, let's get this bracket mounted up so we can see what lengths and where we're gonna connect everything. Now 
Okay, so I've just loosely mounted the fuel filter there just to check where I'm gonna put the mountings, where the hoses are gonna be running from. Now, what we're gonna be doing is there is the intake hose for the actual factory fuel filter, which is this unit here. So that's just underneath here, I'll show you in a moment. I'm gonna disconnect that. That's gonna run up towards the intake on the actual secondary fuel filter here. The output port here is gonna run straight from here into the actual factory fuel filter and from there back through to the engine. Okay, so what that fit out there has just quickly shown me is just where I need to mount the different ports. So I'm not gonna be using anything on the right-hand side. So both the right-hand side ones, they're gonna be getting stoppers. And the only reason there's four ports is you've got these little arrows on here. Now, what these do is it just shows you the, the direction of flow. So these bottom two here, they are both intake ports and these ones up here, they are both outtake ports. So you can mount them on either side depending on where your fuel lines run and how that works. Any other ones you're not using, you simply put the stoppers in those. Because the fuel line runs up from the bottom on the T60, I will be using one of these elbows for the intake port. That's gonna connect up to that one. And then we're simply gonna connect the factory one, which is this barb here, and that's gonna run straight back down. For the output, we're gonna run this 10 mil barb from this side, and that runs through the hose back into the original factory fuel filter. We're gonna be using the thread sealant as far as we go. So what we'll do, we'll get these ones mounted up and sealed in quickly, and then we'll get back into it. Okay, there we go. So that's roughly what that should look like where if you're mounting in the same sort of position that I am. Now one thing to note is with this 90 degree corner, because of this slot bit of a recess here, I have actually had to mount this at a bit of an angle because otherwise you will not have the clearance here in order to actually be able to get the other fe the female connecting plug back onto that one. So just bear that in mind when you are connecting those, use thread sealant on all of those ones. That's just a liquid thread sealant that I've used for this one, rabbit stick. So let's jump across to the U and we'll start getting the plumbing done. Now before my fuel filter goes back in, I'm gonna disconnect the actual fuel line supply hose here. Now this has got a button on either side and that you just press down on those ones and pull back down again. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do this one-handed, so just give me a second. Okay, there we go. So that's the line disconnected there. Now that line here is gonna run onto the intake of our actual fuel filter, and then we're gonna run the outtake hose back on to this connection down here. And that's where you needed those quick connect ones. So it makes your job a lot simpler. Don't have to cut any nylon hosing on these ones. So what you will need to do next is from the output hose on your factory fuel filter, if you follow this around, it connects up just down the bottom here, right next to your dipstick. Now once again, if you squeeze these two little red tabs, one on either side, you can pull that one off there. And then this is your primer pump. So this will help pump through any diesel that is in the lines and clear that for you. And because you've just installed a new pump, it means that there is air in the line. Now once you start pressing that pump, primer pump, you will see diesel flowing out of this side here. And that'll just, just catch that in some sort of cup. And then in the very bottom, fortunately I can't get that, you will see a bit of diesel filling up in there. You'll probably eventually see some air spurting out of the line and then it'll go back to flying diesel, which is the first sign that the fuel is, that the air is fully primed out of the line. There we go, so that's your Riker fuel manager system installed. Now mine is mounted quite high up specifically for the fact that I wanna be able to see the viewing glass at the bottom. That way you can see any contaminants, you can see any water or anything else. That is the benefit of that one for me. I did have to push, pull and reattach some of the original factory fuse line, uh, hose line just to be able to get it quite that high up. Just ran this hose, looped it around, that'll get zip tied there back into the original factory fuel filter, fuel filter, prime it up, ready to go. That's everything installed there. Right here guys, that's the one all completely finished up there for you. Now, if you do have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments or anything like that. Like, subscribe. I'm gonna try and do a couple more videos of any of the other modifications that I have for this one. Um, anything else, and as usual, I'm gonna try and add a few more camping and four-wheel drive videos as well as we go along, so thank you.